Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. So again, back to our Playwright API series. In the last session, what we have seen that we were able to create a user with the help of post call. And uh, we were creating the data with the help of hash map and the same hash map we were passing here in the set data method. So if you see in the set data method, it takes, it can take any kind of Java object. If you see this carefully that if you uh, use this particular, let's see, set data method once again, and let's see how exactly this method is defined. So set data can use object. It can use a string also. It means I can directly pass my JSON string or I can convert my JSON into a byte array or something that also I can do it. So today what we will do, we will try to cover what, uh, with the string. Let's see, we will create one hard coded JSON string and then we will try to supply there. And then what we will do, we will create one user.json file also. And then also we will try to see that how exactly it is taking the direct JSON file or not, right? So let's see how to do this. So for that, I'll do one thing. Let me create a new test class here. And uh, let's see, I'm writing create user uh, test with, uh, let's see, JSON. Okay, with the JSON string that I'm writing like this so that uh, you will remember that what exactly we are doing after seeing this class. Perfect. So I do one thing, the exact code that we have here, I'll just copy paste the code because almost everything will remain same, but I just want to write in the, you know, in the new class so that we can differentiate the code and differentiate the concept. Now, earlier, what exactly we were using that we were using uh, this hash map. So I'm going to comment it out. I don't want to use this particular hash map or just remove it from here. We are going to write one string uh, JSON here that we are going to supply. So I'll do one thing. I'll just open my postman and in my postman, whatever the string that we were passing, exactly same string that we will write in the Java code as well. So this is my uh, postman. And I'll do one thing. I'll just see this particular post call. I'll see the body and in the body we were passing here. So I'll just copy this thing and then come back here. And then I'm going to maintain, let's see, this is my request JSON, a body, which is equal to in double quote with single, uh, in double quote, we have to write this one. Okay. So this is the response JSON body. We have to write here. We don't need ID because ID will be created when we send the request. Uh, automatically, it will be generated by the server. So we just need to maintain name, email, gender, and the status. And let's see, I'm giving a different name here. So let's see, this is I'm writing uh, testing API. This is the name. Email ID is uh, testbwapagmail.com, mail, and then let's see, inactive. And the same response body, I can just simply supply it over here instead of data. And it's absolutely fine. You don't need to change anything. And that's it. So if you have a string JSON body, that also you can pass it here. We will see, is it a good practice or it's really recommended or not? But let's see first, is it really working or not? After that, we are creating a user. Once we get the user, we will get the user ID. And then the same user ID I'm passing in the get call, appending it here, and then sending the request, getting the response and then checking the response is correct or not. Remember, we did the exactly same thing. When we create the user, we will get 201. And then from the same response, we have to capture the ID and supply to the next get call. So let's see it's really working or not. So run this entire test class. And uh, okay, we will cross check in the postman also that exactly same user got created or not. It's giving you some error. Let's see. First of all, it's saying, okay, yeah, 201. Okay, yeah, obviously assertion will be uh, failed because whatever the email ID that we are using, this is a hard coded email ID. Anyways, but here you can see that the data got created. You can see it's giving you T01 and uh, this is the ID. So we will do one thing. We'll just cross check this particular ID. Is it really created or not? So I'll just go to the get call and uh, let's see. And here you can see that, yeah, the data got created. Whatever the testing API, test PWD API, mail and active. Absolutely working fine here. Perfect. Now, if you really want to fix this particular problem, what we will do, because earlier we, we were generating some random email ID, right? And uh, we were using this particular email ID. So I'll do one thing. I'll just um, come back here. Whatever the email ID that you are using, the same email ID you can validate. Or otherwise, what you do, you just uh, comment it out this particular assertion. Okay, that's what. 
and uh, whatever the name that we are expecting, the testing API name that we are expecting, this one. Okay, that's it. So let's quickly run it again. Because see, the problem with this approach is that every time you have to make the changes in your JSON because you cannot pass the same email ID again and again. So let's see, this time I'm passing uh, test api one gmailcom Now let's run it again. That's why this is a bad approach. We are passing the JSON body directly. But now the see, it's absolutely working fine. First, it is actually creating a new user with this ID, fetching the ID, and now calling with the get call and checking that, okay, the same user is created or not. So this approach is fine. You can pass a direct JSON body also in the form of a string, but this approach is not good because now if you really want to change in the email ID or you want to generate some random email ID, you have to do a lot of uh, manipulations in the JSON. And this is kind of with a hard coded JSON. What if tomorrow two more attributes you have to add or two more attributes you have to update or modify. Then in that case, a lot of manipulations we have to do in the existing JSON body. So that's what we avoid that. Although if you have the static JSON that, okay, yeah, every time I have to pass the specific or a static JSON only where I will never change anything in that particular JSON, then only you can just simply pass it over here. I'll try to give name, nice name, let's say request JSON body here, right? So yes, so idea here, the concept here is that you can pass the normal JSON string also, you can pass it. Now I'll do one thing. Now I'll, what if I have some people, what they do have, they have the user.json or .json main files, although they really want to maintain instead of putting the hard coded values over here. That also we can do it. So in that case, I'll do one thing. I'm going to create, let's see, under SRC main or uh, I'll can do one thing under SRC test. I'll create one, let's see, one directory here. Okay. Let's see, this is my uh, data directory that I have created. And I'm going to create one file and the file name is, let's see, user.json file. Okay. See this user.json file that I'm going to create and whatever the JSON that we have uh, uh, captured from here, the same JSON, I'll just copy this and then you just come back here and then paste it here. So this is the JSON that I have maintained user.json. Now I'm going to create one more, another test here, a separate Java test class that let's see a create user with what create user with the yeah just a second hmm. so create user with a json file okay because user.json file that i have created does it support the file support also or file also yes we have that so i'll do one thing exactly same thing i'll just copy from end to end here let's see copy from here to uh, here, copy this and then you simple paste it here. Now, see, if I don't need JSON body in the form of a string. I want that uh, get the path or let's see, get a JSON file. Right. So we have to get the JSON file. So how will we get that? So in that case, we can create the object of file class. So simple create the object of file is equal to new file, something like this. You can create that. And uh, in this particular file object, we have to supply where exactly your user.json is available. So this is my user.json file path. You right click on it and then go to copy and copy the path of this. So let's uh, copy the path from here. SRC test data user.json and come back here. Okay. And then you simply supply this here. Okay. You can just simply write dot forward slash also. It means go to my root project. And then SRC test data user.json. Let's see this was this will work or not. And then this file that you have to import. So let me just import from the java.io package. Okay. Then after that, we have one. You can use files a dot. There is one method that read all by bytes method. Why? Because if you see the set data method here, see if I check that set data method once again, it says that set data method. See, I'll show you once again here that dot set data. It can take byte array also, right? So what we have to do, whatever the file that we are reading user.json, we will convert that into a bytes and then uh, we can just supply that object over here, that byte array that we can supply here. So files dot read all bytes method is available. And then it says that, okay, uh, simple write this particular file object dot 
a two path method, we can use it here. So what exactly it will read this user.json file and this entire user.json file will be converted into a byte array. So I'll do one thing. I'll just maintain one uh, byte array here like this. Let's see byte. This is the array and let's see file a bytes is equal to initially null and the same file bytes. I'm just using it here. Read all bytes. Hmm. And uh, I'll do one thing, the same bytes array, we will supply it over here, right? So see, this is a set data method, and then we will supply it here. One thing, when we get the get call, when we hit the get call, that's, this time I'm saying, okay, the test dot contains, the text dot contains should be Naveen testing. So I'll just simply write, it should contain, the response body should contain Naveen testing here, okay? So let's see, this is uh, working or not with the byte array also. So run as this and uh, let's see. Okay, so yeah, that's absolutely working fine. Here you can see that create user test got created. This is a new user, Naveen testing. And this is the email ID is created. And this is a user ID. You can cross check in the postman also with the same user ID that same user got created or not. So yes. You can see, yeah, we are getting the response here. Same user response, Naveen testing, gmail.com, Naveen testing and all. Perfect. So yes, yeah, hence proved that uh, you can pass the byte array also. You can pass the string array also. You can pass the hash map also. And then in the next session, I'll tell you that how to convert a POSO into JSON and JSON to POSO. So whatever the user.json that we have created, we will use it in the form of Java object. And then... Then we will see what is the advantage of that approach instead of using like this. Okay, so just try this. Let me know in case of any issues. I'll push this code in my Git repository. You can just check the repository URL in the description and then start using Playwright for your API automation. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and God bless you all.